I'm genuinely surprised I didn't see this story coming. I've sat down with many individuals who believe that the 2020 election was improper, to put it mildly. I've sat down with Steve Bannon and argued with him. I think that Joe Biden won the election. I think Donald Trump was effectively anti-elected. That is, people were voting against him. The enthusiasm against Trump was greater than the enthusiasm for Trump, at least according to several polls. I personally thought Trump was the right choice. But with many people casting doubt on the election, we are now seeing in New Mexico, Otero County Commission refusing to certify votes. This is leading many Democrats to be outraged and also fear that come the midterms, something worse could happen. Again, I'm surprised I didn't see it. Now that I see this story, I I feel like it's so obvious. The potential that come the midterms in November, Republican counties and mass refuse to certify the results of the election for whatever reason. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe it's a long shot, but it just happened here. Now, it's just one county. We've had many primaries and everything seems to have gone off without a hitch for the most part. Donald Trump seems to be doing well. So the good thing for Donald Trump and for the right is to roll with the red wave. But what if what if the results aren't what Republicans expect? What if despite a crippled economy and food shortages and gas prices through the roof, Democrats are winning? I think it's still possible. I think it's very unlikely, but hey, I don't know. Maybe the media narratives work. I can't say for sure. And if that does happen, will there be Republicans who refuse to certify much in the same way that we're seeing now in New Mexico? I don't know. I really don't. But I think this is a possibility, if not in the midterms, but potentially even in 2024. I think the the likelihood of this in 2024 is more so. It's possible that we see a red wave in November. And then into 2023, the economic crisis deepens. And the American people say, well, look, you've got Joe Biden and you've got Republicans. You've got Democrats with some power, Republicans with some power. And maybe they don't assign blame to anybody. There was a Washington Post article that said losing the midterms is good for Democrats because then they can basically pit the blame on Republicans if the economy doesn't improve. But with Joe Biden as president and without a veto proof majority, Republicans can't do much of anything. But in the eyes of the public, they'll say, look, Republicans have a decent amount of control in the federal government. And so do Democrats. Whose fault is it really that things seem to be getting worse? And that's where things get interesting, because then maybe come 2024, Maybe it's not Joe Biden. Maybe it's Kamala Harris, but maybe a Democrat wins despite a crippled economy. I'm not sure if I believe that that would happen, but I don't know. And if it does happen, do you then see Republican districts just all refuse to certify? Now, look, we're dealing with one county that's not certifying. A Supreme, uh, the Supreme Court of New Mexico has now ordered them to certify the results. But what happens if come 2022 or 2024, we see, I don't know, 300, 500, 1,000 All of these counties just saying, nope, we're not doing it. Then there's no results. So what do you do? I think we're dangerously close to conflict, to civil war. You've heard me say it a long time, but I just want to say at this point, I don't believe it it is fair to say that I was wrong, at least until now. I think it's fair to say there's nuance and maybe I'm not completely right about everything. I certainly don't think I am. But now we have numerous stories of a fear of a civil war. And the weirdest thing is Fox News running a story outright saying a civil war is breaking out. I didn't include that because I was like, what do they what do they mean by this? Well, I think I could pull it up still. But you've got a squad leftist congressman saying that if the Republicans win, civil war is is, is a risk we are facing. You've got a new poll coming out. Daily Mail reporting on it. Half of this country believes there will be a civil war in their lifetime. I wonder, does that include the older demographic. And if it does, among the 18 to 54 crowd, what percentage of them believe a civil war is coming? I'd imagine it's probably closer to 75%. We have the Fed raising interest rates. Home Depot CEO warning you better have non-perishables and cash reserves because it's going to get worse than you realize. We have this viral video of about 10,000 cattle all dropping dead. Official report is heat. Many he deny it, but maybe it was just heat. Either way, we have the story from a few months ago, millions of chicken being, chickens being culled over diseases, a chicken plant being burned, and the fear about all these food processing plants that are being burned, whether abnormal or normal. The food supply is strained. The war in Ukraine is making things worse. 
it seems likely there's going to be no food, no gas, and your money won't buy you anything come August, let alone November. Now, it stands to reason if that's the case, people are going to vote Republican like crazy. So I don't see this, this story about Republicans refusing to certify as being as being a great as great of a concern as many people might believe it is. But I believe we should take a look at this because this might not need to happen in all of the Republican districts. But what if it happens in the Democrat districts? That's when things get interesting. Twenty eight seats held by Democrats are toss ups expected to probably go Republican. What if in these areas they don't certify? I don't know. Let's read the story. But before we get started, head over to TimCast.com and become a member to help support our work. Go to TimCast.com and in the top right corner, you will see a button that says sign up. Click that button, sign up for however much you can to support our journalists that are writing the news and fact checking every single day. And you will get access to exclusive segments on the TimCast IRL podcast. Last night, we sat with Dennis Prager and talked about religion, spirituality, God, science. It was very, very interesting. We disagreed a little bit. I think you'll get a kick out of it. But we also have a massive library of all of these different episodes with tons of people, including Steve Bannon, Alex Jones. So check it out for sure. And don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe to this channel, share this video right now everywhere you can to help support the work we do. Grassroots marketing is the most powerful thing you can do. And if everybody who watched this video or uh, or listened to this podcast shared it, we'd be bigger than CNN and Fox News and MSNBC overnight. Here's the first story. The canary in the coal mine. New Mexico clash hints at looming election crisis. Otero County Commission's refusal to certify votes over unfounded doubts blatantly flouts state election law. Well, that's the question. Will people just say no? There's an incredibly important standoff playing out in New Mexico right now, says The Guardian, that is setting off loud alarm bells about the potential for overturning a future American election. The clash is taking place in Otero County, which sits along the New Mexico-Texas border and is home to about 70,000 people. Donald Trump overwhelmingly carried the county with nearly 62% of the vote in 2020. On Monday, the three-member county commission refused to certify results of the state's June 7th primary. In their meeting, the commissioners, all Republicans, didn't cite specific reasons for taking the extraordinary step of not certifying the contest. Two of the commissioners referenced generalized concerns about voting machines from Dominion, a company that has been the target of numerous conspiracy theories about the election. The third commissioner pointed to ineligible voters casting ballots, but didn't cite a specific number of votes he was concerned about. I'd like to point something out. This is an inevitability. We have proprietary voting machines. That's insane. Now, I don't believe the conspiracy theories, and I think people kind of lost the plot, a lot of people. I think there are questions around that Time magazine article, the shadow campaign to fortify the election. I think there are questions about lawsuits and changes to voter rules and things like that. All that stuff, I say, I don't like it. I don't like it. But these weird conspiracies about Dominion and Venezuela and China and CIA shootouts in Germany and satellites calm down, dude. But I will say, I'm glad this is bringing light to the fact that we use voting machines that have proprietary software on them, meaning we don't know what the software does as members of the public. The code needs to be open source. Now, I don't know if I agree with these these commissioners not trusting it, refusing to certify, but I certainly think it was inevitable. If you have proprietary machines that eventually people are going to say, we don't know what's on them because nobody likes losing. They're going to say for months, Baseless claims about fraud have been percolating in Otero County, which voted overwhelmingly for Donald Trump. The county commission commissioned a review of the 2020 election by inexperienced people who wound up making inaccurate claims about the county's voting machines. The county commission has since voted to get rid of all Dominion voting machines and count all ballots by hand, which experts warn is less reliable than a machine count. New Mexico law already requires a post-election audit, which the state completed in 2020. Quote, I don't trust Dominion, period. Vicki Marquardt, one of the county commissioners, said during Monday's meeting, I don't have specific examples that I can point to other than the recent audit in the canvas and the uncertainty of what was produced, said Coy, Coy Griffin, another commissioner. Griffin is the, count, is the founder of Cowboys for Trump, who was convicted of a misdemeanor for entering the U.S. Capitol complex on January 6th. His sentencing is set for Friday. 
It's a canary in the coal mine for what could be coming in November and 2024. Maggie Toulouse Oliver, New Mexico Secretary of State, told me she said she'd never seen anything like this before. Quote, what we're seeing in Otero County is a complete breakdown of the rule of law and the democratic process. This isn't just about one little county in a state of two million, uh, a state of two million population. It's about what happens as a result of this. What model are they setting for other similar entities around the state and around the country? This is bad. And I'll tell you why. The fraud narrative has suppressed the vote. So doubt on our elections. I I certainly think people play dirty games. I certainly think that there's fraud and there's impropriety and we need law enforcement to go after it. I don't appreciate Democrats acting like none of it ever happens, but I certainly don't think it's as crazy as most people do. And I think Donald Trump in 2016 is proof you can win. I mean, that was a wake up call. I was disenfranchised until I saw this man pull it off. Now you see the wave of pro-Trump populist Republicans winning. Donald Trump's endorsements overwhelmingly winning. Right now is the time you need to be saying, go out and vote. Voting works and you're going to win. The red wave is predicted by everyone. The last thing we need is people sewing down in these machines. Because you know what? What happens when you get a red wave so shocking that Republicans take, I don't know, a supermajority and then Democrats say, you know, those things Republicans were saying, we kind of think it was right. Then you start getting more challenges to elections. And instead of just saying you, we should have, you know, public source code voting machines and a hand count, you end up with people just saying, nope, system's broken. Let's shut it all down. I'm not, I'm not all about that. I think right now, The fraud narrative is harming Republicans who are on the cusp of major victory. We see it across the board in the polls. Now is not the time to be to be to be sowing doubt. But it is what it is. Let's read local officials across the country citing shaky claims of fraud or a lack of confidence in the results could simply refuse to take the step of certifying elections. People who deny the results of the 2020 election are making a concerted effort to take these take over these little known positions from poll workers to local canvassing boards to secretaries of state. Well, that's fascinating. Well, let's advance the story here. Timcast.com reports Republican counties ordered to certify primary by New Mexico Supreme Court. The Otero County Commission expressed concern over the accuracy of the Dominion voting machines. Well, OK, they've got to certify it now. We'll see if they do. But this brings me to the story they fear from June 1st. Steve Bannon's election takeover dream is starting to take shape. Recordings obtained by Politico suggest the GOP is embracing the precinct strategy promoted by the former Trump advisor and right wing podcast host, a plan that could lead to chaos at the polls in November. Embracing the precinct strategy, reports Vanity Fair, promoted by Steve Bannon, the GOP is reportedly preparing to sow chaos in the 2022 election by creating an army of poll workers and Republican lawyers to challenge voters in Democratic precincts, according to recordings obtained by Politico. The Republican National Committee has been recruiting and training poll watchers to contest votes and building a network of party friendly attorneys to help them. The operation has been cast by Republican officials as an effort to even out uh, to even out party imbalances among poll workers in urban centers like Detroit. But its true aim seems clear to gum up the Democratic process in Democratic areas and lay the foundation for results to be challenged in swing states like Michigan that were key to Joe Biden's victory in the 2020 election. I seem to recall an article from Time magazine called The Shadow Campaign to Save the Election or something to that effect. They argued that CEOs, big corporations, prominent individuals came together to try to figure out what they needed to do to defeat Trump. And they did. The article even calls it a conspiracy, which implies illicit activity, which is kind of creepy. Now, I think what we saw was rules being changed. A year out from the election, Republicans had every opportunity to pay attention, but they didn't. And so when the rules changed, Republicans found out at the last minute, got angry, and the lawsuits went nowhere. Many of most of the lawsuits, I'm pretty sure, were thrown out on standing grounds, not merit, which is interesting. The strategy from Steve Bannon is more so if they've got poll workers, if they've got poll watchers and they've got lawyers, we need the same thing. Well, you do. Just goes to show it's escalation. And I don't think there's any way out of this. You are going to end up with a split country. Key areas where Republicans control election boards refuse to certify election results. And same thing is true for Democrats. And then people just say, "Okay, there's no election. What do we do now? Again, I think it's bad news because it looks like Trump's starting to win 
and regular people are realizing, yo, Joe Biden is bad news. We do not want doubt being sown about in the election. But I do think Steve Bannon is right. Getting people active in the electoral process is a good thing. It's crazy they're framing it as a nefarious thing. Bannon's basically like, hey, guys, get involved in your local elections. And I'm like, yes, you should be. It's remarkable, isn't it? Look at this. The undertaking illustrates the extent to which the GOP is institutionalizing Donald Trump's 2020 election lies and provides a glimpse into the party's efforts to hijack the infrastructure of the election system. This is completely unprecedented in the history of American elections that a political party would be working at this granular level to put a network together. Peniman said, it looks like now the Trump forces are going directly after the legal system itself, and that should concern everyone. Democrats have tons of lawyers that were filing tons of lawsuits. Republicans also filed lawsuits, but it's shocking that Republicans are engaging in the electoral process with legal means and poll workers. Is it because they didn't used to? I think I want to mention, you know, uh, I was reading, they say in the wake of the 2020 election, Trump and his allies mounted a relentless effort to contest the results in several states he lost. Under the new operation, the party could essentially do that in real time with trained poll workers. I can only recommend that everyone get involved. I don't care about your political party. And they're going to mention, quote, it's going to be an army. This is their plan. There are other things I think are taking shape that will bring about chaos. This may just be one of them. In this story from the New York Sun, shut down D.C. protest group plans to blockade Supreme Court on day of possible abortion ruling. Well, that's illegal. You cannot protest at the courts or the home of an officer or a member of the court for the sake of swinging the the results. Not like anyone's going to do anything, right? So that's coming. We have this from Politico. The Supreme Court could foster a new kind of civil war. With three decisions this month, the court could break the back of Washington's authority over regulation. Then the battles over some of America's biggest issues shift to the states. Whatever. A new kind of civil war, perhaps. Well, leftist congressman, member of the squad, Rep. Bowman, predicts civil war if GOP takes control in midterms. Yeah, that rhetoric sure is escalating. A lot of people like to say that I'm crazy and I was wrong. I love it. I absolutely do. It's fascinating to me that in 2018, I said I felt a civil war was coming because of what we were seeing in terms of political escalation between the younger gener- with the younger generation. I had conservatives tell me that I was crazy because the security state would never allow it. The intelligence agencies would never, never allow it. America was too strong. And I said, it, it, it's ridiculous. Civil war happens when the culture war divide reaches the highest level of government. Then I had leftists who mocked me and said, this crazy guy thinks a civil war, what an idiot. Then they tried framing it as though I was calling for one. Certainly not. If anything, you want to call against this man. You want to return to uh, bickering on wedge issues, not this. But then several things started to happen. And one of those things was Donald Trump's challenging of the election. And they said, this is a coup attempt. It's a coup attempt. And I said, you remember when I said the culture war is going to reach the highest levels of government? And it did with Donald Trump. I wasn't I wasn't making a bold prediction. I was looking at what happened two years prior with Donald Trump's election. Then January 6th happened. And now they won't shut up about it. Now the left is claiming civil war is coming. And I think it's fair to say. Strong likelihood. The New York Post reports most Democrats, Republicans say U.S. democracy won't last. Well, they say something else. The poll found that 52 percent of Republicans, 50 percent of independents and 46 percent of Democrats believe there will be a civil war in the United States in their lifetime. OK, so about half of each voting block, about half the country thinks there's going to be a, well, more than half. If we're looking at 52 percent of Republicans and Republicans make up a quarter or so of the voting block, it's been going up. So let's say 30 percent. Democrats are like 35 and independents, I think, are like 40 yeah, more than half the country. What I'd be will, what, what I'd like to see, <clears throat> excuse me, remove everyone over the age of 55. And what does that number become? I'm fairly certain that number will skyrocket. And you'd be looking at two thirds, two thirds of the younger generations believing that we were on, we are en route to some kind of civil war. And there are many reasons to believe that it will come. The Daily Mail reports, so this is the same story, a poll conducted by the Southern Poverty Law Center 
Oh, I'm sorry. This is actually the older story. Okay, so <clears throat> excuse me. This story from the New York Post is a Yahoo News YouGov survey. This story from the Daily Mail is an SPLC, Tolchin Research story from June 1st, which found basically the same thing. All right. Harvard Youth Poll finds young Americans are worried about democracy and even fearful of a civil war. Okay, NPR. Imagine another American civil war, but this time in every state from January. All right. Here's a story. Here's where I think we need to start paying attention to what may actually trigger something more serious. Let's start with the food. The Kansas City Star reports thousands of cattle suddenly die in Kansas. Officials say heat is to blame. They say, according to Reuters, it could be about 2,000 animals. But the Kansas Star, which absolutely is NewsGuard certified as one of the most credible, says the number could be much higher, up to 10,000 or more, according to DTN, an outlet that specializes in agriculture industry analysis. While heat stress deaths are known to happen, they don't to this scale. This is a very unique and unfortunate event. Cattle are generally hardy animals and able to handle heat, but there's a limit. The problem in this case is that temperatures were high during the day, but didn't drop at night, or at least didn't drop far enough, largely due to uncharacteristically high humidity. Hagen said, this worsens with consecutive days of high heat, and as such, the cattle couldn't get any relief. Take a look at this, a video of all of the cattle just slumped over and dead. Now, I don't know if you can eat it. I don't know if you can do anything with it. This is devastating. Ian Miles Chong tweeting out, extreme heat caused it. Robbie Starbuck says they did not die of extreme heat. I talked to multiple ranchers since I saw this video, and they all say this needs to be investigated ASAP to get to the bottom of this, because there's no way heat caused 10,000 plus cattle to drop dead. It's not normal. Now, that's an opinion. We don't know for sure. It may just be heat. As they mentioned in the article from, I believe it's the Kansas City Star, that high humidity and extended periods of heat. And look, these cattle are, are all black, so they're absorbing that sunlight. Perhaps they just needed a good old water and hole. Or maybe something else happened. Maybe they got sick. Maybe we need to pay attention. Take a look at this from CBS News. Egg laying facility in Iowa kills 5.3 million chickens, fires 200 plus workers. Why? Rembrandt Farms, where the mass slaughter took place, uh, one of the wealthiest Iowans, yada, 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 and blah, blah, blah. Animal rights activists are in arms over reports that a chicken farm in Iowa killed more than 5 million birds after detecting a case of avian influenza. Could it be that these cows got some kind of illness? Yeah, I think heat stroke is probably just the likely answer. Simple solutions. I do think it needs to be investigated. But let's get back to the bigger picture, why I'm bringing this up. 5.3 million chickens. We got tens of thousands of chickens killed in 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 a fire. You've got these cattle. You've got stories of all of these food plants being damaged in fires or warehouses and distribution centers. I'm not saying that that's happening more than normal. A lot of people think it's a new thing. It may be comparable to every year. Fires happen and we have a lot of food facilities. But regardless, now is not the time. The point is these stories are still relevant because we're facing a food shortage. From News Nation Now, fourth generation farmer, food shortage is coming. You think? Yeah, if you've been listening to my show, yeah, I, you know, I've been talking about this for some time. They're going to say, after Wall Street's tumble into a bear market Monday, with rising interest rates sending the S&P 500 more than 20% below its record, one fourth generation farmer is warning the worst is yet to come. People are going to see the rising cost of food in their local grocery stores in the coming month. Along with a farming background, Boyd Jr. is the president of the National Black Farmers Association and a member of President Bill Clinton's Tobacco Commission. Farmers are feeling the pinch from high cost of diesel fuel and fertilizer. Truckers are feeling the pinch, and you have a certain region in the world that's not planting crops at this time in Ukraine. So there's going to be a shortage of wheat and commodities that they've been producing there as well. Well, the Federal Reserve's plan to raise interest rates, a blunt tool that risks a recession if used too aggressively, and we're in one as far as I'm concerned, is supposed to remedy a fast rising inflation. It also, it's also souring sentiment for shoppers across the country. They're going to mention all of these things. Eggs are up 32%, poultry 16.6%, milk is up 15.9%, fats and oil 16.9%. Overall, the cost of food is up 12%, the largest increase since 1979. That means if you did not get a raise of at least 12%, you got a pay cut. To be fair, if you didn't get a raise of 86 the official inflation rate, 
you got a pay cut. You, you didn't literally get a pay, a pay cut, but your money is not going to go as far. The challenge is that if you didn't get a pay raise, the company likely isn't bringing in more money. Now, look, I believe if a company is seeing profits increase, they should make sure they're covering the cost of inflationary raises for their staff. It's not always that easy. Here at Timcast, for instance, we aren't seeing revenues go up. We're actually seeing revenues go down. Why? Because with inflation, with, with, the, with the economic devastation, there's less advertisers. Advertisers are willing to spend less and our revenues begin dropping. How can we then afford to pay people more money when we're making less money? Now, of course, we can cut back on investments and we will we'll, we'll likely end up doing something like that if we can't find a way to grow the company. But we're in a recession. Fortunately for us here, and thanks to all of you as members at TimCast.com, we're doing well enough. We are. But I always say to you guys, as much as I, as much as I love, appreciate, and need your support at TimCast.com, I really do hope you're taking care of yourself because, you know, we're only doing this because of all of you and for all of you. As much as it is for myself, to be, to, to be completely honest, I mean, look, I enjoy doing the work. I enjoy making the money. But for the most part, I enjoy just calling out the lies and the manipulations. But I, I can only do it because you guys support it, because all of you watching. If you think it's worth uh, supporting, then support it. But if you need to support yourself, dude, I totally get it. We'll find a way to make it work or maybe not. What is the most important thing right now as there's the potential for midterm chaos the political divisions, food, fuel shortages, inflation. It may come to a point where you say to yourself, with this 10 bucks, I'm sorry. I got to buy my family as much food as I can get. And that I understand. Boyd went on, to, went on to explain that staples such as corn, corn syrup, and soybeans are all types of products local farmers produce daily, which in turn helps place the major products on the shelves that shoppers are accustomed to seeing. You know what, though? Personally, cut back on the corn syrup. A lot of corn, corn products, soybeans. I think people eat a lot of garbage. That is to say, some people have no choice. But here's where we're headed next. Fed rate hike will have devastating impact on consumers, former Home Depot CEO warns. Bob Nardelli urges sustainable habits in the wake of the Federal Reserve's 75 basis point hike to tackle inflation. I would tell the consumer, make sure that you're building up cash reserves. Build up a supply of non-perishables in your home. Make sure that you're prepared for sustainable inflationary periods. Nardelli's remarks came ahead of the Federal Reserve's announcement Wednesday, which stated it will raise 75 basis points, 0.75. The Fed's decision comes in response to record high inflation. Quote, every time you go to the store, what you're going to see is they're, going to be, is they're trying to avoid sticker shock. So you're paying $5 for something for a consumable item. The fact is you may have 10, 20, 30 percent less in that bag or in that can. So that's really the inflationary number that doesn't always get accurately reported in the 8.6%. This is the important factor. Shrinkflation is not in that number. When they say food is up 12%, you know what they're not telling you? There was, there's this guy who posted this video where he shows a box of cereal. It's like 14.5 ounces. And that was like a year ago. And now it's 12 ounces. But they're the same box, same price. So they say eh, the cost of cereal hasn't gone up. In reality, it has quite a bit, but not only has it gone up, it's gotten smaller. Inflation is much worse than all of you realize. Well, actually, most of you probably realize, but the average person probably not seen it. I bring this up because I believe what will truly lead to major conflict. It is not just that people don't trust elections or that you have political conflict and violence. It's that people are going to be hungry. Hungry people are scared and scared people can react violently. In this story from Fox News, I found this one hilarious. Backlash. Why media are targeting Trump aides testimony as civil war breaks out. I thought that was a bold headline, to be completely honest. Donald Trump's former attorney general, Bill Barr, so the president was detached from reality. Howard Kurtz writing, civil war is breaking out. Okay. They're just outright saying it. I call this political civil war. What's happening with the January 6th committee? What's happening with the arrest of Ryan Kelly in Michigan? What's happening with, with the uh, Democrats going after Republicans? The smears, the lies, the media manipulations? Yo, it's a civil war. 
For now, it's confined to the political space. Call it civil strife or whatever you want. I don't know how it manifests, but I know that you have people right now protesting illegally in front of a, a judge's home. And protests can be illegal. They can, like blocking a road. But you get a slap on the wrist, they arrest you and you carry on. Does it, you know, I, I've seen tons of people have gotten court supervision charges and they, they arrest you and say, you can't do this, go home. Instead, what we're seeing now is them saying, we don't care if you do it. We don't care at all. The neighbors of Brett Kavanaugh and Amy Coney Barrett and many others demanding justice, not getting it. Now, these protesters are targeting the school where Amy Coney Barrett's kids attend, her children. Where do you think that leads to? A dark place. I think the Supreme Court, too scared, in my opinion. But we'll see. I think they're scared. They may capitulate and then end up not overturning Roe and Casey as, we, as they works, they're expected to do. It seems like they're gonna and they know it and they're just waiting as long as they can and, and drawing out the story and trying to quash it and avoid the shock when the story drops. Or, that's, that, that's what I've said, or they're giving activists time to stage. The Supreme Court draft opinion was leaked, showing that they intend to overturn Roe and Casey, send abortion back to the states. Some people believe it was leaked so that the Supreme Court will be forced to uphold that early draft. If they change their mind now, it'll look like they were swayed by the riots and the violence. Kavanaugh will look particularly pathetic. Maybe it was leaked um, by the left to shock everybody and let them know what's coming. Maybe that's it. Maybe they want time to prepare for mass riots and to organize. I don't know. I can only tell you the factors are here. And that's why people believe it's coming. The canary in the coal mine. I don't know if we'll see decertification or refusal to certify in the midterms. But it could happen in 2024. I guess we'll see as time goes on. I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up tonight at 8 p.m. over at YouTube.com slash TimCastIRL. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you all then.